This video gives some definitions and facts related to maximum and minimum values of functions. A function f of x has an absolute maximum at the x value of c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. The point with x and y coordinates of c, f of c is called an absolute maximum point, and the y value f of c is called the absolute maximum value. Now if I draw a graph of f, the y value f of c is the highest value that that function ever achieves. And an absolute maximum point is just a point where it achieves that maximum value. Now it's possible for a function to have more than one absolute maximum point if there happens to be a tie for the highest value. But a function has at most one absolute maximum value. A function f of x has an absolute minimum at x equals c if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the domain of f. In this case, the point c, f of c, is called an absolute minimum point, and the y value f of c is called the absolute minimum value. In the graph of f of x, f of c is now the lowest point that the function achieves anywhere on its domain, and c, f of c, are the coordinates of a point where the function achieves that minimum value. For example, this function has an absolute minimum value of about negative 8, and it has an absolute minimum point with coordinates 3, negative 8. If this function stops here and just has a domain from 0 to 4, then the function has an absolute maximum value of 10 at the absolute maximum point with coordinates 4, 10. If, however, the function keeps going in this direction, it will not have an absolute maximum value at all. Absolute maximum and minimum values can also be called global maximum and minimum values. In addition to absolute max and mins, we can talk about local max and mins. So a function f of x has a local maximum at x equals c. If f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x near c, by near c we mean there's some open interval around c for which this is true. For our graph of f, we have a local maximum right here. Even though it's not the highest point anywhere around, since there's a higher point up here, this is the highest point in an open interval around C. The point C, F of C, is called a local maximum point, and the Y value, F of C, is called a local maximum value. Similarly, a function F of X has a local minimum at X equals C if F of C is less than or equal to F of X for all X near C, and the point C, F of C, is called a local minimum point, and the y value f of c is called a local minimum value. A function might have many local minimum values. In this example, assuming that the domain is 0 to 4, we have a local minimum point right here, because it's the lowest point anywhere nearby. It also happens to be an absolute minimum point. Now turning our attention to local maximums, we have a local maximum point right here with coordinates about 1, 2. Since f of 1 is as high or higher than f of x for any x value in an open interval around 1. In this example, the absolute maximum point of 410 does not count as a local maximum point, simply because we can't take an open interval on both sides of 4. The function doesn't exist on the right side. 
And so for that sort of technical reason, we end up with an absolute maximum point that's not a local maximum point here. Local maximum and minimum values can also be called relative maximum and minimum values. Please take a look at this graph and pause the video for a moment to mark all local maximum and minimum points as well as all global, that is absolute max and min points. See if you can find the absolute maximum value and the absolute minimum value for the function. I'm going to mark the local max and min points in green and the absolute max and min points in red. The function definitely has a local min here since this is the lowest point anywhere nearby in an open interval and there's a local max point here. There's also a local min point here where the function also hits a low point in an open interval but that local min is also an absolute min, so I'll mark it half green, half red. There's also a local min point here at the point 3, 2. Since this point is the, as low or lower than any point in an open interval, and the function is defined in an open interval around 3, even though it's discontinuous there. In fact, this point is tied for local minimum with all the points on this interval here between 2 and 3. They're all as low or lower than all points in an open interval around them. The point 0, 4 doesn't count as a local max because the function is not defined on the other side of 0. So there's no open interval to, to consider. This point is also not an absolute maximum because the function gets higher over here. In fact, as long as this trend continues, the function f of x has no absolute maximum value at all because its values just keep getting higher and higher as x goes off to infinity. There's one more point that I want to consider, and that's this point here at 3, 3 3.5. Well, it's tempting to say that f has a local maximum here. It looks like it's the highest point on the ground, but in fact, there is no point here at 3, 3.5, 3.5, right? The function's value at 3 is actually down here at 2. So there's no point here to be a local maximum point. And if you start looking at points really close to that point, those aren't local maximums either because you can always find a point just a little bit higher as you get closer and closer but don't quite reach this missing point of 3, 3.5. So we have all the absolute and local max and min points marked. And now to find the absolute maximum value, well, we just said that there is none. But the absolute minimum value is the y value of this absolute minimum point here. So I'd say that's about 0 0.5. Let's think for a moment about the relationship between absolute maximum points and local maximum points. Please pause the video and answer these two true and false questions. The first question is false. A local maximum point does not automatically have to be an absolute maximum point, right? We've seen local maximums that were the highest nearby, but not the highest anywhere in the domain. The second question asks if an absolute maximum point is automatically also a local maximum point. Well, that's also false because we've seen that absolute maximums that occur on the endpoints of where the function is defined, those absolute maximums don't count as local maximums because we can't get an open interval around that x value where the function is defined. But this second statement is true about points that are in the interior of the interval where a function is defined. So I can say that an absolute maximum point that is not at an endpoint of the interval where the function is defined is also a local maximum point. This is a very useful observation 
because it means that if we want to find absolute maximum points, we just need to check the endpoints and local maximum points in the interior of the interval. We'll use this principle a lot in problems to come. Now, not every function is necessarily defined on a closed interval with endpoints, and sometimes strange things can happen as far as maximum and minimums for functions that are defined just on an open interval, or maybe on the whole real line. We'll look at a couple examples as we answer the following questions. First, does a function always have at least one local maximum point? Please take a moment to think about this question before you go on. The answer is no, not necessarily. For example, the line y equals x defined on the whole real line has no local maximums. It just keeps on inching up and up forever. Now, does a function always have at least one absolute maximum point? Well, no. In fact, the same example, the line y equals x, is a good example with no absolute maximum point. The function y equals tan x, defined on the open interval negative pi over 2, pi over 2, is another good example of a function that has no local maximums or absolute maximums. We can get a kind of funky example of a function with no absolute maximum by looking at the piecewise defined function f of x equals x for x between 0, including 0, and x less than 2, and f of x equals, say, negative 1 for x equal to 2. So this is a function whose domain is the closed interval 0, 2, but when I graph it, it inches up towards the point 2, 2, but never quite reaches it, and instead dives down here to negative, a value of negative 1 when x equals 2. There's no absolute maximum value here because I can get arbitrarily close to this value of 2, but I never can quite reach it. So we have three examples of a function that doesn't have an absolute maximum point or an, or an absolute maximum value. We have y equals x on the whole real line, negative infinity to infinity. We have the function tan x on an open interval, and we have this non-continuous function on a closed interval. But in some sense, these are kind of the only types of things that can go wrong. Either having a continuous function but on an open interval, or a non-continuous function on a closed interval. And that's what the extreme value theorem tells us. It tells us that if we have a continuous function defined on a domain that is a closed interval, then it must achieve a maximum value and also a minimum value on its domain. Here I've drawn the graph of a function. What do you notice about the derivative of this function at its local maximum and minimum points. Please pause the video and think about it. Well, the local maximum and minimum points are here, here, and here. And at two of those points, the derivative, f prime of c, equals 0. And at the third point, f prime of c does not exist because the function has a corner. A number c is called a critical number for a function f if f prime of c does not exist or f prime of c exists and equals zero. So in other words, all of these local maximum minimum points for this example, they're all critical points. And this is true in general. If f has a local max or min at c, then c must be a critical number for f. We also say that the point c, f of c, is a critical point for f. 
it's important not to read too much into this statement. This statement says that if f has a local max or min at c, then c must be a critical number. But the converse doesn't hold. In other words, if c is a critical number, then f may or may not have a local max or min at c. One example to keep in mind is the function f of x equals x cubed at a value of c of 0. Since f prime of x is 3x squared, we have that f prime of 0 equals 0, so 0 is a critical number. But notice that f does not have a local max or min at x equals 0. In this video, we defined absolute max and min points and values, as well as local max and min points and values. We talked about the extreme value theorem, which guarantees an absolute max and min as long as we have a continuous function on a closed interval. We talked about the fact that absolute max and mins can occur at endpoints of intervals or in the interior of an interval where there are also lo local max and mins. And finally, we talked about critical numbers where the derivative is either zero or doesn't exist. We noted that if f has a local max or min at c, this guarantees that c is a critical number, but not vice versa, as the example y equals x cubed showed.